Hi, I'm Michelangelo, owner and chief engineer here at the Mix Palace. Today we're going to talk a little bit about mixing, some of the tools I use, and some of the techniques that I use. First off, I want to start off by saying I uh, still mix on an SSL console. And one of the reasons why I still use the SSL console is because of the flavor it adds to the sound. You know, these consoles just have a beautiful tone and character to them. I do sometimes mix in the box for clients that want to mix in the box where they've already started their mix at home and they bring me the mix in the box and they just want me to tweak it a little bit. So sometimes I do that for them. Sometimes I'll keep the whole mix in the box for them and I'll just stem a few things out through the console to improve the sound quality. So I'm open any way the client wants me to work with them. Um, this particular console was highly modified by me. I spent over 30 years researching and just figuring out what parts of the console I thought were really great and other parts that I thought could be improved. So it's a custom console and some of the parts actually from this console came out of the Led Zeppelin console that I bought from Led Zeppelin about eight years ago. Now the interesting thing about my mixing technique is I mix on a high resolution mastering quality monitor system. The reason why I mix on this kind of system is because it enables me to EQ each track individual, individually with mastering precision and before I blend everything together. So using a precision monitor system to equalize and compress each file individually in my opinion enables me to bring out the most out of people's digital files. Even if they're recorded in a house or, or in a basement, I'm able to surgically go in and really bring out the most of that sound. It's almost like I'm re-engineering each file um, because I have such precise tools. Some of the tools I use uh, to do this with is I use this custom preamp made by Shoujo Kinoshita. This preamp, uh, which I acquired in 2003, uh, is extremely transparent and neutral. And it allows me to hear precisely what's coming out of the console mix bus. That preamp then drives the Kenoshita power amps, which were hand built by Shoujo Kinoshita also. And then the amplifiers drive several different pairs of monitors that I use. One of the main monitors I use uh, for mixing is the Kenoshitas mounted in eight tons of solid concrete. These monitors are flush mounted and um, they're able to withstand levels of 125 to 30 decibels. These monitors, because they're flush mounted and they're in a perfectly symmetrical control room, enable me to really hear with extreme precision what's on the file and how to equalize it precisely. I also use these infrasonic mastering monitors to do most of my equalization on. These Kenoshita infrasonic mastering monitors allow me to hear a degree of precision that I was never able to hear before. So these, these little monitors are really incredible to equalize and compress each digital file one by one before I blend everything together. So from there, um, I use a lot of vintage outboard. I'll use a pair of Yuri Blue Stripes. I have actually the original Reve, uh, one of the very first ones Bill Putman had built for Nat King Cole. I use Inwood Connection Vac Racks. Um, I use uh, Yuri LA3As Vintage. I use a lot of vintage Neve compressors, including the 32264As and the Neve metal knobs. Um, of course, I have all vintage Pultex. So I use a lot of vintage outboard gear. I'll pick and choose whatever I feel will add a nice color and character to people's sound. And um, I'll do that individually, you know, before I blend it all together. Once the mix is done, I'll usually print the mix onto either half inch or quarter inch tape to impart a little bit of an analog quality to the sound. So combination of the console, the vintage outboard and the tape machine really helps bring a lot of warmth to the sound and a lot of depth. And that's really the reason why I, I use this stuff.